What's going on people in YouTube land? Kimchi Chris here and welcome, welcome, welcome to today's brand new awesome video. And for today's video, I'm going to talk about something that you knew was coming. And if you've been following the channel for any amount of the time in the past, you know that I'm a Vinny Vincent fan and a lot of you are because a lot of you have joined this channel since the Vinny Vincent videos have been getting released on it. And this past weekend, I did get to go to the 2018 Atlanta Kiss Expo. In other words, the grand return of the mighty Vinny Vincent. Now, I did say in the previous video I was going to try to some type of uh, vlog of the weekend or of the expo itself at least and because of some unfortunate things that did happen at the expo which I will address in the following video from this one part two to this one uh, there's not a lot of content that I got basically because uh, there were just some things out of my control there were some things out of my control and uh, you know it's a thing that happens occasionally you know I probably shouldn't announce things uh, before they're confirmed to actually happen, but I did say I was going to try and unfortunately it didn't happen But with this video here I'm going to talk about the positives of the weekend the following one will be more about the negatives But in other words, this one's gonna be a lot about Vinnie Vincent himself and the Vinnie Vincent experience that I had This weekend or the past weekend here at the 2018 Atlanticus Expo So I did purchase an autograph ticket as well as a photo ticket to meet the great Vinnie Vincent and uh, you know I figured I might as well do both of these because who knows if this is ever going to happen again. This guy's been gone for a very long time. He might get to this. He might not enjoy it. Now, mind you, he did seem to enjoy it, which is great. Thumbs up there. But, uh, you know, I purchased them both in advance. And, uh, you know, I got the tickets when I got there. And, uh, you know, then we got in the lengthy line for the autographs and pictures. And this, again, I will address more in the other video with all the negatives because that line was not handled so well but the positives were when I finally got up to the front and uh, got in the room to meet Vinny the they divided these up and that's pretty common at uh, expos conventions nerd events things like that and uh, so they did a picture time and an autograph time basically so you can have the you know person that you're meeting in one spot at one time and one spot at another time so they aren't taking a picture then setting down and signing taking a picture setting down and signing etc and the pictures uh, were the first thing that really happened and hopefully by the time I'm uploading this I'll have my picture and you'll see it right here but uh, Vinny was so amazing when I walked in the room he was so nice uh, by this time what he looked like and things like that were not so much of a shock because the internet exists and everybody had seen a thousand pictures and videos from the Friday VIP experience beforehand and on that note anybody that's you know commenting on his looks and things like that that's just it's silly and it's ridiculous, okay? You don't look like what you look like 20 years ago either. And, uh, you know, if you're mad about the makeup or mad about the weight or anything like that, that's also ridiculous, especially the makeup. Come on. Come on, people. This is Kiss. A band known for makeup. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. And Vinny wore high heels in the 80s, okay? This is not surprising. None of these things are surprising. And honestly, when you were there in person, because most of the people commenting on this were not even there, of course. When you're there in person and you walk in this room for the photos, like I did, you see Vinny there, and honestly, I think he looked better in person. I think he looked better than these pictures. These pictures, I don't think were the best representation of him. I mean, in the video, the lighting was kind of weird in the room and things like that. And if you see a lot of these pictures where he took the one-on-one uh, -on -one shots with the people, as hopefully you just saw if I did have it in time for this video, he looked a little bit better, I think. And when I walked in the room, he was very welcoming, like, hey, how's it going? I'm so glad you made it. He gave me a hug. I got a hug from Vinny Vincent. That's not something I ever thought I would be able to say. I, in 2018, hugged Vinnie Vincent. I didn't think I'd ever see the guy. Honestly, there was a time period, and I always hoped this wouldn't happen, but there was a time period where I thought the last we would hear from Vinnie was just a headline that he had passed, and I, I would have been very sad because I would have never had the opportunity to experience anything with one of my favorite members of one of my favorite bands that is living during my lifetime and finally has come to the forefront and is doing things again. So, very welcoming, but also very quick. We took the picture out of the room said thanks for coming I'll see you in a bit and uh, that was it you know it was a maximum 30 seconds or so but it was an amazing 30 seconds that made all the waiting and the time and the money and the energy kind of worth it already so at that point it was back to the back of the line again and uh, again gonna address these lines in the next video but uh, it was a long wait again for the autograph time but you know whatever at that point I was committed I'd already paid in advance 
and luckily everyone around me was a very positive, really cool person. I met a lot of amazing people this weekend, honestly. The KISS fans that were at this expo were just phenomenal, phenomenal people. A lot of you hopefully are watching this because I know a lot of you uh, wrote down the channel's name and said you'd subscribe and all these other things, you know, and if you are watching this and you are one of the people I talked to there, comment below. Go ahead and comment and say, hey, I'm that guy you talked to, you know? I talked to people that said they did Kiss Collection videos on YouTube, people that do guitar lessons, people that do song analysis, and people that just don't do anything but said that they wanted to subscribe to the channel. I even had some people, probably a good 20 or 30 people throughout the weekend that came up to me and said, hey man, I've seen your videos on YouTube and it's awesome. So again, thanks to you guys, but this is getting off track. It's what I'm kind of known for, but it's getting off track. Back full circle here, back to the autograph line. So it took a while, it took a while at this point, but uh, we finally got through the line and when we got up to the door and the time had come for the autographs, it was great, it was great. Similar to the first interaction with Vinny. And uh, he even did say to me, hello again. So he actually did remember me from earlier. And I know he's seeing all these people all day, two or three times and things like that, but I thought it was a nice way to welcome me back of hello again, as opposed to just hello or hi or what have you. Basically him going that extra mile to say, you know, I remember seeing you earlier. And I just told the guy, man, I said, look, this is just something I really appreciate. I didn't think that I would ever get to see you or get to see you perform or actually even see you release music in my lifetime. And this is just, this means a lot to me. And he said, yeah, you know, I'm just glad to be here. This means a lot to me to have you guys here. He was so appreciative. And uh, he signed my picture here, which I'm, I'll do a more close-up shot and kind of overlay it, but my, uh, my picture here that I got him to sign, I did have him sign it to Chris because I didn't want any speculation in anyone's mind that I purchased this thing on eBay or a collector's store or like another expo. I wanted people to know that I was there in person with Vinnie Vincent and uh, I got the picture. And... It was very exciting. It was very exciting. I'm going to frame this thing, put it on my wall, and it's going to be one of my most cherished KISS items. It was great. The photos and the autographs with Vinny were amazing. So after all the meet and greet stuff was done, unfortunately, I missed a good chunk of the expo. That's why there's not a lot of vlog footage or anything like that. I, I missed some of the things I really wanted to do because these lines were kind of so unruly. I uh, missed uh, the Eddie Trunk q and I missed uh, the uh, video footage they were showing that wasn't going to be shown apparently ever again of uh, some of the Vinny days uh, with creatures and what have you. Um, I missed Ron Kill performing for the most part. I stepped in there for a bit and got to see a little bit of him and he did a good job. But I did come in and get to check out some of the Bob Kulik Q&A. It was awesome. Bob Kulik just seems like such a down-to-earth amazing guy and uh, just really nice and um, that was a great thing to walk in on and get to check out about, uh, I don't know, maybe 20, 25 minutes or so of it. I also got to check out some of the dealers finally. Unfortunately, by that time of the day, a lot of the good stuff was gone, but I did pick up a few cool things. I got a uh, Japanese tour book from a couple years back, as well as a uh, original pressing of The Elder with the actual, that, that kind of see-through sleeve. I didn't have one of those, and I got a Vinnie Vincent 45 uh, as well, but that's really all I bought. I didn't get a whole lot of stuff, because a lot of stuff I would have wanted was gone by the time I got in there, unfortunately, and uh, a lot of the more common stuff was... You know, it was okay on pricing, but uh, I wasn't trying to break the bank here. I have some other plans. I know some things are coming up. I'm even considering the Gene Simmons vault. So my money, or my kiss money, I guess you would say. My kiss money? Kiss money? I, you can't put kiss and money together too well. I guess you could do kiss cash. and spell the cash with a K because everything with kiss has to have the K in it. But uh, anyways... The dealers, though, had some good stuff, I'm sure, especially earlier in the day, just not a huge amount of it interest me. And there were, of course, a lot of tables set up for podcasts and things like that. You had Decibel Geek, you had Three Sides of the Coin, you had Growing Up Rock, you had all kinds of great podcasts there. And uh, you even had, like, the uh, Kiss Alive Forever book guys, you had the uh, costume replica guys, you had all kinds of great stuff. So there were some really good stands and uh, dealers there. Uh, the room, most of the time when I got to go in the main expo room, felt a little bit too full for the room for the space i mean i'm sure they were within fire codes at least i hope they were but it seemed like there should have been more space allotted for these this many people now uh, this did sell out i heard the sellout point was somewhere around 900 to a thousand people i can't confirm or deny that but if that was the case they should have cut it by like another 100 or 200 less or something like that or just got a bigger space i don't know it just it seemed a little packed for the amount of space that they had, but uh, with all this being said, the room was set up well with the stage in the middle and the dealers all around it. And so after the Bob Kulik Q&A, there was a little bit of downtime, uh, but the moment that so many people were waiting for finally came, and that was the Vinnie Vincent 
Q&A. That's right, Vinny was gonna step out and talk to all the people. And it was kind of funny when they were trying to announce him on stage because there were a few premature starts. They'd say, and the amazing Vinny Vincent! Everybody's clapping, going crazy. They're playing it on the eighth day over the PA. Everyone's going insane. Things are getting thrown in the air. People are dancing. Girls are throwing their panties at the stage. And then all of a sudden, he didn't show up. And a lot of people in the room had not done the meet and greet throughout the day. They had not done the photos. They had not done anything. And a lot of people were starting to get cold feet. You could tell. They were wondering, is he going to come out? But luckily, all those videos and things that had surfaced, people knew he was there. So there wasn't too much concern. And then they announced again, the wonderful Vinny Vincent explosions, pyro, the ceiling is falling, heaven is on fire, everything. And then he still didn't come out again. But eventually, he came out. I think it was just... Uh, Miscommunication, uh, which seemed to be the theme of the weekend, and eventually Vinny came out, came on stage to a huge round of applause, huge standing ovation, and uh, you could just see the guy smiling up there, and he just, you know, resonated to the audience that this guy had a warm soul and was very happy and very excited to be there, and that's exactly what we wanted from this. And one of the things that was funny is that the rest of the expo just like stopped at this point, just uh, you could look around and see all the other guests watching this even. I uh, look back, Eddie Trunk was just a couple people back from me. You saw Bob on the side, Ron Kill was over there. You had uh, the girls in Pris on the side of the stage watching. Everybody had stopped and was just like, I wonder what's going to happen now. Even the dealers, they were just on the, the chairs at their tables staring at the stage. And uh, that's when it all started. And uh, I don't know what a lot of people expected from this Q&A as far as questions and what have you. It was being done by the moderator. It wasn't like a public, like the audience can necessarily ask questions Q&A style thing. And I think that was done on purpose because, you know, Vinny's been gone for a while. There's a lot of rumors about him. There's a lot of speculation. And in the end of things, there's a lot of trolls out there. So I think they were trying to make it the most safe environment they could for Vinny. Now, mind you, questions being crazy or not, there were cops everywhere. You could tell this guy was concerned about what might happen. So I don't really think there was much to happen. These police they made their presence felt, but not obtrusive, and uh, with that being said, the Q&A was pretty much what you'd expect. They asked him questions about like joining KISS, riding with KISS, royalties. They touched on the touchy subjects like the dog incident, the wife incident, the never released box set incident. So they talked about all those things, and I'm not really going to recap that too much because it's being talked about all over you know, YouTube already. This is my experience of the convention overall. I thought some of his answers were great. I mean. Who knows what's true at this point? Who knows if Vinny's answers are true? Who knows if Jean's are true? Who knows if Paul's are? I mean, we weren't there. A lot of these things, in my case, at least happened before I was even born. A lot of the drama and, uh, you know, you can just go with some of the facts that exist. Now, you know, for example, the wife thing with the, you know, supposed beating of the wife, which he kind of dispelled as something that didn't even happen. That's one that you got to wonder if it really did or not, because, I mean, the guy's not in jail. You know, I'm just saying. If that had really happened, we would have got a lot more than a mugshot out of that. We would have heard about Vinny being in jail. So I, I kind of believe him when he says that that wasn't really his deal. Just throwing it out there. Uh, the dog incident, he kind of explained that too, of not being his deal and it just being unfortunate timing. He seemed to really you know, be emotional when talking about the dog situation. Uh, if you haven't seen the video, the quick version of that was the dogs that they found in his house when they were searching after the wife incident. They found the dead dogs. He claimed, and I've heard about this before, that... The dogs were killed. One of them was killed even by his wife, and uh, he was just kind of saving their manes, planning to bury them in the backyard, but it was winter, and the ground was too hard, and all these other things, and he's keeping them in the garage. You know, well, valid excuse, I guess. I don't know, but I'm not here really to judge him one way or not on that. What I will judge on is that the Q&A was awesome and very, very entertaining, and a lot longer than I thought it would be. This thing, including the music performance at the end was about two hours in length and that was awesome. I expected we'd get maybe an hour out of it but uh, I don't even know if maybe he changed the plans knowing about some of the agitation of the fans throughout the weekend and said you know I'm gonna go a little bit longer with this and uh, at the end the grand finale to everything on this was a music performance at the end. He had an acoustic guitar and uh, he played. He played for us. He played an unreleased demo called Tears which you can click on the YouTubes here and find. That was awesome. I mean, hearing it with the acoustic guitar and just the emotion behind it was, it, there were chills, there were chills. I knew I was witnessing something that outside of the other thousand or so people in the room, no one else in the world was ever gonna witness this in person the way I was. And it was just, as a KISS fan, it was it was great. I saw, I looked around, I saw some people even tearing up and what have you. 
it was it was an amazing experience if you're a Vinny hater and you've made it this far in the video I'm sorry but it was amazing and uh, then he did a million to one off of lick it up one of my favorite kiss songs of all time that was great and then he did that time of year from the invasion days as well as back in the streets which uh, the original singer Robert from the Vinnie Vincent invasion joined him on stage for that and you could just see these guys practically tearing up on stage it was a reunion that apparently was unplanned unexpected and just kind of happened and again all these magical moments I get to witness because I was there and uh, it was just great I mean despite some of the negative things that happened throughout the day this four song set acoustic guitar vocals it was it was pure magic I just I don't know how else to really say it as a fan of Kiss as a fan of Vinny as a fan of just rock and metal this was something that I never thought I would see in my lifetime and uh, I'm just glad I got to be there so with all said and done, that was pretty much the end of the Q&A, and there wasn't a huge amount left for the day. Uh, the tribute band Pris did close out the day. They are a mostly all-female-based uh, KISS tribute band. Uh, their drummer is a guy, uh, and uh, they did a special Creatures of the Night themed set where they had, uh, you know, the guitarist as Vinnie Vincent, funny enough, still with her ace uh, guitar, and uh, the drummer was Eric Carr, and they opened with Creatures and played some other stuff from the album. They even brought Ron Kill on stage to do Rock and Roll Hell. It was great. They were a really fun band, a really good way to end the day, and they put on a great performance, and uh, if you get a chance to check out Pris and another Kiss Expo or at a club near you, definitely do it, because uh, these ladies know how to represent the Kiss songs perfectly in 2018. So despite a few lowlights that I will touch on later, uh, this expo was a pretty good experience and at the end of the day, I would go to another one. I would go to another one. There's already talks of another one being put on by these guys that's also going to be fairly local to me and uh, you know, I'll check it out. I definitely will check it out. And I don't want to talk too much on that one because there's a lot of it's rumors and speculation. Who knows it'll happen, but if it is announced, of course, you know me, I'll do a video about it, talking about it, yapping about it because you guys are interested in these Vinnie Vincent videos and you're interested in these KISS videos and they always do well on the channel. So overall I enjoyed the expo despite some stuff that happened, but these were the positives of it. Meeting Vinnie was amazing, Pris were amazing, Bob Kulik was amazing. I'm sure some of the stuff with like Eddie Trunk and the three sides of the coin guides were great. And uh, all in all, it was a good day, it was worth the money, I would do it again. and. Uh, let me know what you guys thought of it. Did you get to go to the expo? Are you watching this because you met me there? Let me know in the comments below. And uh, if you have stuck it out this long and watched the whole video, give it a thumbs up as well. Hit the subscribe button as well because I want to let you guys get some more of my opinions on Kiss, heavy metal, anime, nerd stuff, all those things. And uh, hit the alarm so you actually get the updates. Once again, my name is Kimchi Chris and I will see you guys on the next video.